Hi, my name is Thomas Grove. I'm a designer living in Saigon, Vietnam. I'm originally from the United States. I've uh, been a designer for a long time. I mean, as a child, I played with Legos and I built uh, forts in my backyard, um, tree houses and stuff like that. Go uh, like uh, soapbox cars and all kinds of things. So I, I think that counts. You know, I was in high school and in university, I was doing a lot of web design and I worked for a web design company. Uh, and there's a lot of similarities and crossover between that and game design, but when I decided I wanted to start doing games, um, people wouldn't hire me uh, as a game designer because I didn't have explicitly a game design background. Uh, now that I have have worked in games for more than 10 years, it's hard for people to take me seriously in something that's not game design, but personally I believe that there's a lot of uh, core fundamentals that cross all design disciplines. So um, I'm interested in all kinds of design and like to play around with all kinds of design. So I was living in San Francisco uh, and I was looking for a new job and I saw a job placement, a job advertisement for uh, kind of a creative director position at a game studio in Vietnam and I applied and, and they sent me here. And uh, after working in that company for like two and a half years, I decided to leave and, and start my own company here. Uh, graphic design and design in Vietnam in general is a fastly developing field. I think when I first came here, so say four and a half years ago, uh, design was pretty far behind um, the world standard, but uh, and there wasn't a lot in the way of formal design education available. I think a lot of the people who have working in design in the past 20 years here um, have a background in either painting or maybe some kind of artisanal craft or architecture. Um, but now there's schools teaching all kinds of different kinds of design and of course with the internet uh, people interested in design can get influences from around the world and look at tutorials from around the world so uh, the gap between the level of quality between Vietnam and the rest of the world is, is, is shrinking. Um, in terms of the quality of execution of work there's some there is some very high, uh, very talented people here who can execute at a, at a high level. Uh, the level of design thinking and critical thinking in general is not that high. Um, people tend to do quite derivative works and uh, you know don't ask the, ask the question why as often as they should. But that's also something that is improving. Uh, has been improving since I've been here. Um, I feel it's improving anyways. I like to call myself a designer, just simply a designer. Um, or sometimes, you know, a lot recently I'm calling myself a functional designer. And within functional design I would include things such as uh, systems design for video games, uh, UX design for apps or websites, um, removing misfits in architecture. So not really what the final color of paint is going to look like or the exact pattern of an engraving. Not the facade of things, but at the lower level, how are people interacting with the world? How are they interacting with your products? That's what I'm mostly concerned with. Graphic design is really visual communication design. So anytime that you're creating visuals, graphics, to communicate some kind of information or some kind of call to action, some kind of emotion, anytime you're trying to communicate through a visual medium, that's graphic design. 
Uh, normally we use that term for design that's presented on a flat surface, so paper or a computer screen, but it, it wouldn't have to be, I suppose. You could have uh, some signage, for instance. Signage is graphic design and it's and it's oftentimes has a third dimension to it. Uh, motion graphics is graphic design and it has a time dimension to it. So, uh, yeah. Um, communicating visually is graphic design. Uh, other fields like game design or film also communicate visually. They, you have to worry about the composition when you're setting up your film camera and you're setting up the scene that you're going to film, right? So that is kind of graphic design also. Uh, but those mediums also incorporate other media, audio and interactivity in the case of games. So uh, they're not only graphic design, but graphic design is like a component of what you're doing there. I think probably the worst part of graphic design anywhere is uh, the client of the designer. So we see a lot of bad graphic design here. I think you could call it gaudy. Uh, that's probably the right word. Stuff with lots of um, you know, lens flares and bevels and uh, drop shadows and textures and photos with feathered cropping or you know. and uh, but there's a lot of cases where you know the designers want to do something great but the clients expectation is not in alignment with that I mean the clients taste let's say is not in alignment with that so you'll find a lot of architecture interior architecture and and graphic design in Vietnam that has a very different aesthetic than, let's say, like a uh, Scandinavian aesthetic. It's not minimal normally. It's flashy. Uh, stuff like gold and shiny stuff and marble. So Vietnam does have a very rich art artisan craftsman heritage. Um, embroidery wood carving, traditional garment construction, and um, yeah, really gorgeous crafts. There's a lot of efforts recently uh, to pair Vietnamese craftsmen with Western designers to have them produce goods um, that are that leverage their skill set, but you know, kind of modernize them a bit and present them in a new way that might make them appealing um, as, a, as fashion objects or as fashion um, to the wider world. Uh, it's kind of like a social entrepreneurship endeavors. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool stuff. What else? Um, this, this is, I mean, this is not graphic design, but it's still designed from my kind of my definition of solving problems. Um, you'll see a lot of ingenuity. You have, there's a lot of ingenuity in Vietnam. Even if you just look at the kinds of things that people transport on their motorbikes, and you're like, that thing should be falling over, but it's not. Um, that's a kind of design, I think. Uh, there's a lot of areas where you don't see a lot of city planning, and, and like the streets are very organic, kind of spider webs, and you could go into one alleyway and kind of get lost and have a hard time finding your way out. So if you're living in the U.S., you might be living in a housing development, some kind of suburb environment with very manicured, uh, you know, manicured lawns and, and uh, houses that have a lot of... Uh, similarity in their design from one house to the next so you have some kind of continuity and here it's kind of a no holds barred there's not a lot of planning so things have grown up quite organically the city has grown organically and uh, to me it's more interesting I mean I prefer this chaotic style
over like McMansion type style stuff. Um, still maybe not as nice as something like Copenhagen where things are kind of anally planned out, but yeah. Oh, I don't think it's going anywhere in, in that, I mean, I don't think it's going to go away. I think uh, visual communication, if you, if you use Facebook or any of these social media things, um, I mean, it's just a stream. If you watch television, if you look at social media, it's a stream of visuals. So we are constantly communicating visually with each other. Uh, if you walk down a street, you see posters or billboards or signage streaming past you. So, yeah, it, as, as, as far as a profession, it's, it's, gonna, it's here to stay, I think. I mean, the, the tools will keep changing. Uh, things like Photoshop and Illustrator feel pretty, uh, to me, they feel pretty stiff these days. They're very old. Um, they just have stuff that's been added on over the years. They feel heavy. Um, a lot of times there's stuff I want to do that takes much longer than I think it should take to do it. So I think you'll have some new players in that field. Uh, web design and stuff like that too, I think. You know, there'll be better tools and better frameworks for making that kind of stuff. It's happened in video games as well, like the tools to make games have gotten better, more accessible. So uh, there's that. Um, I wonder how design will be valued as time goes on. You know, I guess I wonder what its value is now. And I suppose uh, you have two things happening at the same time. I do think that populations in general are appreciating design more and more. Uh, people want better designed objects in their life. But at the same time, uh, the barrier to entry to becoming a designer is lower and lower. Uh, it's also the same with, with, with music or anything else. I mean, if you want to write music or if you want to make a painting or you want to make a graphic design, if you have a computer, you can. So there's more competition out there, you know, and there's more noise out there. But there's also, uh, you know, people appreciating it more. I like solving problems. In my day-to-day -day life, when I have to do kind of administrative things, it's, it kills me. Like, it feels, I'd rather do anything else. So I don't have a career in administration. Um, I thought like flying fighter jets would be kind of cool, but I'm not really good at listening to other, like I don't, I can't stand still and have people yell at me. I'm not good under that kind of situation. So uh, that ruled that out too. Um, yeah, game design, filmmaking, graphic design, music composition. Um, these are all things that I just enjoy uh, being able to do. I like being able to express myself. More so than expressing myself, I like solving problems. I like being in a client meeting or in a team meeting and, and saying, hey, we have this big problem, how are we going to solve that? And brainstorming the solution to uh, solving that problem. I love it. So, and when you're doing graphic design, if you're doing architecture, and if you're doing games, there's always problems coming up, you know, and they have to be solved often just right on the spot. So, you know, if you are a designer or you want to become a better designer, I think you always have to analyze everything around you all the time. Um, you have to be asking why. Why is this thing this way and not another way? And you have to ask, is it good this, this way? Why do I like it? You can't just say, this thing is good or this thing's bad. It's not enough. You have to look deeper, try to break it down into its components and figure out what is making this feel good to you, what's making it feel bad to you. You know, what are the logical or illogical 
aspects of it, what are the uh, aesthetic aspects of it that are working and not working. Um, yeah, and you can do that while you're watching film or listening to music or uh, looking at a poster, piece of graphic design or logo. You can say, why is this element in that position? Why did they use this color? Why did they use this shape? You know, could a better, could a different shape work better? Could a different positioning work better? Um, you know, is this type easy to read? Would it be easier to read if we change the line height or the kerning or the the weight of the characters or a different font? Um, and then also, you know, balancing the form and the function and uh, and the budget of a project. So. Uh, Oh, something like, well, that's uh, just to make that point, you know, design's not only how something looks, if you remember, it's how it works. Um, and if you're making design for a client, it also has to support their business goals and be achievable within their budget. So, yeah, design's more than just how things look. And it's more than just how they work. It's it's solving the problem within the con of how to communicate visually uh, in a way that is aesthetically appropriate and satisfies you know effect communicates effectively, satisfies their business goals, and is something that can be done within their budget. So yeah. So thanks for having me on.